Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, team fans and followers from around the entire world. She is Whitney Weiser. I am Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and today we're interviewing a real life trader. I'm really excited about this interview because Whitney has an amazing tribe of accelerated growth focused, both men and women, uh, people who specialize uh, on their health and on their wealth. And Whitney's been on a journey of the stock market for about a year now, and I wanna talk to her and just kinda get a little bit of insight about her journey and see how many similarities you guys might be able to find in her amazing growth over the last few years and also what we can do going forward. So Whitney, how are you? I'm great, I'm glad to be here, thank you. Yes, I'm so glad that you're here as well. Thank you for being a part of this. Why did it take you so long to trade the stock market? Because it looks so intimidating. All the charts and the ticker symbols and everything. It was just so intimidating. And um, like you said, the first time I even thought about trading stocks was a year ago when uh, I saw you and your excitement <laughs> on the G-Force <laughs> call. And you just made it seem so exciting and easy. And I'm like, well, I can do this. This guy makes it seem like really like simple. So before that, I had never thought about it because nobody, I mean, I just, it wasn't interesting to me. Nobody ever explained it like, like you did or broke it down like that. So. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, and yeah, it, it, that's one thing that is struggling and weird. And that's the reason I created RLT is because there are a lot of people that do this and most of them are boring which is weird because I'm like, man, this is, we're making money. We're increasing our net worth. We're helping other people around the world. I think this should be an exciting and amazing adventure. And just a lot of people don't see it that way, but yeah, that's what I think it is. I'm, I'm, money is fun. Money is very, very fun. Tell everyone a little bit about your journey getting here though. Uh, just like the high level pieces, uh, there was, you, you have a very dedicated sport that you focus on. What sport is that? Yeah, it's bodybuilding. So I competed in the bikini division of a bodybuilding for about 10 years. Um, the last time I was on stage was about two years ago, so I'm retired now. But um, yeah, it took a ton of discipline and commitment and organization uh, to a goal. So a lot of focus uh, went into that. And, um, and yeah, so I kind of see a lot of similarities to the stock market now uh for some reason i've struggled with the discipline um of <laughs> to a plan. i know who would yeah. guess like when it comes to fitness i will stick to a plan like to a t until the goal is accomplished and so i don't know why at first i wasn't translating that level of discipline from fitness over to stocks but now that i am it is definitely helping a lot the consistency uh with my trading yeah, I love that. It's beautiful you brought that up because that's what most people struggle with really is the discipline. Can you tell us a little bit about what it takes to be at your level of discipline? I mean, what does that truly look like mentally? Oh my gosh. So, well, take you back to my competing days. It's like everything you do or don't do revolves around that one specific goal. So in bodybuilding, it's very different from other um, high level sports and that we're based on aesthetics and your look and not performance. So the goal is to look a specific way when you get on stage. It doesn't matter how much you can lift or how strong you are. It doesn't matter any of that. It matters how you look. So every single day, everything that you put into your body, everything that you um, lift in the gym, it goes to that one specific goal. So you are, your mind has to stay so focused on like if you're eating six meals a day, which I always did, it's always revolving around, okay, when's the next time to eat? Is that meal prepared? Um, and then it's like, okay, after work, got to hit the gym. This is what I'm doing today. It's shoulders and triceps. Like everything is so calculated to a T. And then when you get home, it's like sleep. You have to sleep to recover and making sure everything is prepped for the next day. All six meals are ready to go. And like, you're executing a plan like on the highest level to be your best if you want to win, mm. if you're doing it to win, which I always did it to win. Ooh, that's a really, that's okay. Two big takeaways from what you just said. Number one, make it, make everything revolve around that singular goal and then do it if you only, if you want to win, <laughs> which if most people when they're win, trading, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Most people in their trade, they might not know what winning looks like. They might think, well, winning is just me making more money. But you have to understand it's a lifestyle component. And that level of discipline, it doesn't mean that you have to do it for your entire life with that one particular thing. So like right now, Whitney doesn't eat six meals a day every single day. Do you? No. Yeah. So it's in that moment, right? When you're training, when you're getting there, but that's a process of this is the end goal. This is the end result. This is what I want to achieve. And having that incredible prioritization that totally focuses yeah. around that goal with your whole life. So you're talking about your schedule. You probably told all of your friends, your family, everyone that you were around at the time, help me get there, help me do this. And here's all the pros and cons, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. In bodybuilding, especially when I first started competing though, like it was very weird lifestyle. So um, most people didn't really understand it and weren't supportive uh, back then because in my mind, I have a vision for where I'm going with it, but not, even though I might try to explain my vision to somebody else, they, it's not their vision. So they don't get it. And I had to get to a point where I was just on, I stayed so close to my vision and I wouldn't let people in if they didn't understand it because I didn't want that negative um, feedback. And um, honestly, mm. I've gotten, I now realize I've gotten the same with stock trading. Um, I didn't even realize it mm. until I just said it just now. But people um, automatically assume, oh, you're going to lose all your money. Um, it's too risky. It's like putting your money in a slot machine. And I'm like, it's not like that at all. It's a very calculated, um, you know, you follow a plan, just like in fitness, it's following a plan. And you only risk what you want to risk. It's a predetermined amount. And so the people, they don't understand that either. And so I just stopped talking to people about that and surround myself with the real life trading people and everybody that understands it because I don't want the doubt and the negative feedback from anybody else. That's a very, wow. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I took us on a different trail there, but <laughs> no, it does. It, just, it makes a lot of sense because when you are going after a goal, I would say you're right. The only way to achieve whatever that specific goal is, is to make it a massive priority and then surround yourself with people who support you in that mission. And if they don't get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's hard sometimes, especially if it's family, but it doesn't mean you're cutting them out of your life for the rest of your life. It's just for that season when you need that intense focus. Mm, yeah, that's a valid point. Yep. That's another valid point. Um, Cause you're right. You don't have to do it forever. Like you mentioned, that could be a season where you have very, you have massive intentionality, you have extreme focus, you have extreme fortitude, but it's not forever and ever and ever. It's just something right. that you're doing for that moment. Okay. I can respect that. Ron in the chat paint says, control your environment. Yes. Control the environment. So I love a part of your story, Whitney, when you're discussing with me and you and I have known each other for about a year now, we've spent a lot of time together in person, which is amazing. So I know a little bit about you and that's why I know this, some of these questions asked, you started with an amount of money that for a lot of people would seem very reasonable. Tell us a little bit about when you first started out, how much was it and what broker were you using? Oh yeah. So, so when this, when I discovered stocks a year ago, a year ago, do I need to turn my volume down? No, you're good. I hear feedback. Okay. Um, so I have to take you back to the very beginning. So what I do for most of my income is I run a fitness competition, which you already know all this, but, um, I run the, uh, IFBB NPC Nashville fit show, which is a women's only bodybuilding show. Okay. So 2020 happens and I'm, just getting myself going like money's coming in for the show that's supposed to happen may of every year and um i had just paid off all my credit card debt um, but i knew it would be fine because i had money coming in well then march happened and COVID happened everything got shut down um, my fitness event got canceled um, because there was just so much uncertainty in the world and money stopped coming in so i had just paid down all my debt I was feeling good and then money stopped coming in. So I didn't have money to invest. I put like, I think it, it might've been $20 at first or it might've been $100. I can't remember what it was. It was between 20 and $100 because I just didn't have any money. Um, and the first share that I bought was American Airlines for like $11. And I, <laughs> I was like, if I lose $11, I can live with that. So I'm yeah. just gonna do that. 
Um, and I just kind of waited for it to go up. It went up a couple dollars and I sold it. And I was like, huh, I just made $2 and I didn't do anything. I could keep doing this like <laughs> a lot more time, but with yeah. more shares. And so yeah. I, so I went to my, a couple of my friends and my family and I'm like, Hey, let me borrow some money. Um, because I'll give it back to you, you know, down the road. Um, and I never asked for money or otherwise my parents would not have given it to me. If they, if I'm asking for money, then it means, Hey, I really need it. And I'll really pay it back later. So I got a few thousand dollars, um, from them after I gained that little bit of confidence that I needed. <laughs> And then I just start started little by little, but I didn't, I definitely didn't go from buying one share to a thousand shares. I just slowly increased um, like 20 shares, 30 shares, 40 shares, and kept doing it until my confidence level just increased like a little bit each time. And I just kept going like that. I love that. That's a really intriguing aspect of the story because what I'm really hearing you say is it took a level of confidence when you, you tried it you did it and that all kind of started clicking because you saw the numbers and you realized, okay, I started with a small amount of money, I'm doing this. And then you went out to your parents, which is the same thing I did. And most people in a way realize that you actually do have the resources to start whatever you want to do. If it's a business, if it's a new career, if it's quitting your job and doing something grandiose, if it is trading, the money's there, the resources are there. You might not have them personally, but go and create enough resourcefulness to go create that income or create that cash flow so that you can fund whatever it is you're doing. And the situation was trading. And it, it was a confidence thing for you because you had never done it before. Right. Which is a, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Well, if it's if you've never done something before, and I deal with this on a fitness level all the time because I help competitors compete for the first time. And I know what it was like for me. If you've never competed, you've never been on stage, you have no clue what to expect along the way. And I have to relate everything to fitness so I understand it. So I relate trading yeah. to fitness. And it's like, I'm not gonna get a level of confidence until I at least do it. Like I can sit here and listen to all your tips, but if I'm not using it and I don't do it myself, I'm never gonna get the confidence that I need to keep going forward. So. I think that's the key um, most people miss out is like they excessively think about things like too long. And it's important to make good decisions, especially when it comes to money. But at some point, you've got to start implementing, even if it's just a little bit at a time. Yep, that is that is very true. And also, you're being a little humble about the whole workout thing, because if I'm not mistaken, you also won like all of it. <laughs> is I that correct? <laughs> <laughs> I did really well. Um, I dedicated my whole life to it um, for a number of years. And I did compete um, at the Olympia, which is the uh, it's like the Super Bowl of the bodybuilding world um, for pro athletes. So it's very um, it's not normal to get to the Olympia stage. So I'm very I was very happy and proud that I, that I made it there. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a <laughs> huge, huge accomplishment. That's phenomenal. Uh, but the part about the confidence. There's a great question in the chat pane. I'd love to get your take on this as an athlete, because not only are you going to be able to shine a light on this sector and industry for so many women that I think are missing out because they don't have the confidence because they've been told they can't do it or they believe they can't do it because I'm not good at math or I'm not very good with money or I'm not very smart, whatever limiting beliefs a lot of men and women tell ourselves. But before that, the confidence piece how do you regain your confidence after losing money? Because you've also lost on some trades as well. Oh, man, I've lost and I learned my lesson. I always listen to Jeremy <laughs> when I didn't listen. <laughs> <a lot. laughs> um, yeah, so I think my answer is going to be different um, than how a lot of people deal with this. But um, for me, anytime I've had a setback in life or I've lost quite a bit of money. I don't stay in uh, the, the failure. I acknowledge it very briefly to learn the lesson from it, but then I move past it as quickly as possible because I, I think I just know subconsciously the longer I stay there and really think about how much I, I've lost or how much, how much further I have to go, I start like a negative progression and I 
And a lot of people do. I think the mistake is they stay there too long and then they start going downhill. And the further down you go, the harder it's going to be to pull yourself back up. So acknowledge it quickly, like two seconds. You know, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to take the lesson from it, but then I'm going to move forward and focus on the positive on how can I fix this? How can I regain what I've lost? So Mm -hmm. that's how I do it. Is there anything that you do physically? Like, do you go out and like go to the gym or anything else after I've lost money or mm-hmm. when I- yeah after you lost yeah. money yep so well since the market's been really down um the past three or four weeks instead of looking at it constantly and focusing on the negative I just go to the gym and take out the aggression there <laughs> because the gym is going to boost your mood anyway you need to be in there to be healthy so why I'm not going to look at the market if there's nothing I can do about it I'm just going to wait go to the gym and then come back to it you know it'll go back up eventually but i can't sit there and look at it if there's nothing i can do about it yeah i mean i'll get people to ask me a lot because obviously i've lost i've had losing streaks and times where i'll you know time where i lose but in general for me i try to find the smallest things that i can do the the, the t- whatever those tiny tiny little wins are to regain that confidence because a lot of times it's not for many people, not everyone, but for many people, it's not the fear of losing money that you're mad about. It's not like, oh, I lost money. Now I'm scared. I'm going to go broke because I can't make money. Most entrepreneurs figure that out. It's the fact that you're wrong and that you're not good enough and you're not smart enough. Those are the ones that start creeping in your brain you're like, I'm an idiot. I I am a moron. And you start thinking that over and over and over. So go out and conquer the tiny wins, whether it is going to the gym and working out for 30 minutes or going on a two mile run or reading a book or spending time with your family uninterrupted from your cell phone or creating an Instagram post that's uh, that's amazing and captivating and uplifting for other people or a Twitter post or whatever. It can be like, go take out the garbage you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but go do something. You're like, okay, cool. I took out the garbage today. What can I do tomorrow to start regaining this confidence back? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, but yeah, you just hit on something like the whole self-doubt thing and the bad, the negative limiting beliefs that start to creep in. I think that's why I never want to stay there too long. Um, because I said this in my TED talk too, that self-pity prevents problem solving. So if you want to stay there and, you know, think, you know, I'm an idiot, I'm never going to get this done. Well, it's a form of self-pity really. So that's going to prevent your problem solving abilities on what you just said. Like, what can I do now? What's one thing I can do? Mm. Wow. Self-pity. That That's a really good term. I mean, because if you openly out loud, say some of the things that you're feeling and and classify it with a word. A lot of times that'll help you feel better because you don't want to do that. You know, if you say it in your head mentally, you're going to get stressed out. But if you make it become real verbally and say, I'm going through self-pity right now, you're like, well, I don't want to do that. That sounds dumb. So how do I figure out a way around that? Right. Yeah. So tell us about some of your, uh, tell us about some of your losses, which, which stocks, what were they? Oh gosh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Kodak. <laughs> Kodak. Oh man, I was doing great. I was like in and out, in and out, making money. And then I talked to you and you're like, yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, oh, but just one more time. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> one more. It's going to be fine. I got this. No, it went way down after that. I think I bought it for like, 30 something dollars and it tanked to like $7. And I don't even know what it's at today. Cause I finally just got out of that trade completely. And I took the loss cause I couldn't look at it at it anymore. What stock was that? Do you remember? Kodak. Kodak. Gotcha. 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 Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, it happens. And trust me, like you mentioned earlier, you're going to have losses. There's probably been times you competed and you lost as well. You know, there's been times where you, you put in all this work and for nothing and you can allow it to be nothing. You can, you can be at that end and go, yep, that was all for absolutely zero progression as far as like, I didn't get a check mark, but then you got to go back through all the things that you did to get there. And let's say you start off with $10,000 and you go up to 30 and then you lose all of it. And now you're back at 10. I was like, okay, 
what you've done it once before. So I was like, okay, I can do that again, but how can I do it a little bit differently in that span? And what things can I do and how can I propel myself just a little bit differently so I can either keep more of the gains or pull some of the money out or reward myself or whatever, whatever that might look like. Right. Right. Just take the lesson from it and move on. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. So, but you did do really well in your trading though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, um, so what I've been able to do now is I was a trainer, um, as of last year, um, I would train people one-on-one in person and online in addition to my fitness event, because that was, it's most of my income, um, events, but it wasn't all of it. I still needed that training income. So now I'm able to, I don't have to train people. I'm taking what I'm making from stocks and just using it as cash flow. So what this allows me to do is it's just so much. Yes, exactly. I'm so happy about it because I was running around. I mean, I'm still running around like a chicken with my head cut off most days, but I would have to go train. I'd have to stop what I'm doing, like whatever event I'm planning, um, which is just massive work. I would have to stop what I'm doing, go train somebody for, you know, not very much money, trading time for money. And then by the time I got back to what I was doing, um, you know, getting fo- refocused. It's like I was losing so much uh, time and efficiency by having to go train people. And so now what trading allows me to do, I can just trade, make the money that I need to, to supplement my other income and not have to be running around constantly training people, doing this, doing that. So it's just, it's been a game changer in my life. Mm. That's so cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Like that's amazing. It really is because I hate to keep like pouring on the, the woman train, but you know, you are. And I want all the women that follow you and love your message and love your zeal and your energy and your motivation and your drive to realize that you and me, we're not smarter than they are. I mean, in fact, you and I are just normal individuals. Well, we just know how to hustle and we know how to not give up and we're going to keep going. We're going to wake up at seven in the morning or six or four if we need to. (laughs) Right. Set the alarm, go to sleep, wake up, do what you got to do, put in the work and put in the time. Yeah. And I mean, that is my whole purpose and life mission in life. So the reason I started the show um, in the first place is to inspire strength and confidence among women, uh, because I feel Mm. like and men men have it too, like a little bit of insecurity, but I feel like women just have it on another level. Um, They just lack confidence. So sorry, my cat had to <laughs> kick him out of the way. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I just feel like um, women just experience on, it on another level. And yeah. if they aren't confident in themselves, they're not going to be able to ever create the life um, that they, you know, that they want. And that's worth living and they're just always going to settle. And I feel like the way that trading is going to play into that now is now that I'm my mind is more open to it. And I can, I I can't teach it like you can, but I can at least open their mind enough to see so much more that you can do when you're, when you're making money and you don't, you're not stressing about money constantly, your mind is free to do other things and create the life you want. And it's that that peace of mind and the mental clarity that is game changer. hundred percent. And this, there's so much realization with this, but let me just give you an example and you can share your, num- your numbers or stories if you want to, totally up to you. But let's let's take a trader and let's say her name is Laura and Laura um, has a $3,000 account and she takes $3,000 to $7,000 over the course of two months, right? Well, now she's made net profit four grand and that $4,000 could be four months of a mortgage payment that could be uh, 10 car payments, right? That could be an entire credit card. That could be an amazing, like a really, really good destination trip for her family or for her and her husband or for her and her children or her and her moms or sisters. Like that could be like a legit trip to, you know, somewhere and back, right? Flights, hotel, food, the whole nine. And it gives an opportunity to not stress for like a day about money. 
And yeah. what you mentioned, what is so true, if you can, men or women, create that clarity of mind where you don't have to go, shoot, I need to pay this month's mortgage. How am I going to do it? And you go, you know what? I actually got the next four months covered. Yes. And you're able to say, all right, I'm going to take these next four months and pay off in advance. Then now your brain, when you go to sleep at night or when you wake up in the morning or in your shower or wherever you do your best thinking, you now have total clarity and an openness that allows you to think of something badass, you know? 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a, that's a good example because I feel like it's kind of what I've managed to do. Um, my whole you know, reason for trading is cash flow. I have long term investments um, that I don't manage. So this is just cash flow for me. And so now instead of taking all the money that I'm making from my event um, and paying my bills with it um, and then, you know, being left with a little bit for a vacation here and there, I'm paying my bills off what I make with stock trading. So now all the money that I'm making from my events, I can one, put back into the event to grow it and I can create more events to empower women, which is, that's my life goal. Yeah, enrich lives, so right? Awesome. Create an impact. So, so awesome. now I can create more and more events that women can come to, they can be impacted, they can see like they're fully capable of creating whatever life they want and have the confidence to do it, so. Man, it's just game changer. I keep using that word because it just is. It's a it's a great word. It's so cool because you're absolutely right. It is the cash flow creation that that opportunity that is what the stock market is. And and also to go back into this a little bit, it wasn't that you showed up, you traded some American Airlines, you made two dollars, and you cash flowed two dollars. Like, no, you went out, put your reputation out on the line, asked some of your, you know, your friends and parents, and and got a few thousand dollars, wrangled it up together. Wasn't like an ultra, a weirdly, incredibly huge amount of money, but you're able to take that money, grow it relatively substantially, I might add. And it wasn't by accident either. You also spent like three to four hours a day going through classes and material and studying, you were on the treadmill watching classes and taking notes for hours at a time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm glad you brought that back up. Um, because <laughs> I'm glad you brought that back up. Um, so, you know, we were talking about seasons of your life and okay, I'm gonna yeah. relate it back to fitness again. Once Bring it. you start, Once you start training, okay, you it takes a very consistent level of focus to get your body to your goal okay but then maintaining is easier it's a lot easier but you have to get there first and so when i was spending hours i was in the day trading room i was taking your beginners course i was doing all these things because i needed to be surrounded by it and hear it over and over and over again and so that's how i learned it's like it, it feels like a language to me. If you learn a language, but you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And I feel like that with stocks. And it doesn't mean that now I don't spend hours and hours a day. I spend maybe um, 30 minutes to an hour a day, but I need to hear some stock lingo. I got to hear something just to keep it fresh in my mind. And that's that's mm -hmm. the difference maker. So it's like it's consistent focus for a period of time, but it doesn't have to be hours and hours the rest of your life. And I think that's what people need to realize. It's like, you don't have to be in front of a computer for, you know, four hours a day for the rest of your life. It's just to get you, you know, on an even playing field so that you can, you know, the terms, you know how to make money, and then you can just maintain from there. It's a lot easier. Love that real life perspective and, and that example, because it is, it, it is, like you said, the season of your life, spend some time, carve it out, put some other things away. And even though you might not quote unquote, make money while you're learning, it's the whole sharpen the ax for 12 hours and then cut the tree down in an hour analogy is spend time on yourself first and just really build it, build your confidence, build your knowledge base, build your, uh, your portal of information and then go from there. Yeah. I actually took your beginners course twice because um, it had been a while since I had taken it. And when I was doing the mentor group with Yates, I'm like, man, I need to review this stuff to even understand it. And it's crazy that the second time around, I just understood everything so much better. Nice. You know how like yeah. 
second time or whatever, like, wow, I missed a lot of things. It was the same thing before. <laughs> yeah. I actually yeah. understood it the second time. Especially if it has like a twist, you know, like I watched the prestige the other day, I think for like the third time ever. And I was picking up on all the things as it, you know, as the movie goes on, but that, I mean, that's every movie with a big twist at the end, right? Like you just see things differently the second time or a third time through same thing with the book, right? If you read a book, like well, that's one thing that I have failed at for a large part of my life is rereading books numerous times because I'll read a book once and be like, Oh yeah, I'm a genius. I got that book on lock and I'll just keep going book after book after book. When reality is you can go back and read the same book multiple times and get a lot of different pieces from it as well. But same thing with videos, same thing with courses. And you did mention a mentorship program that you also went through with another, you know, fitness freak, Yates, uh, who is a part of RLT. He's got an eight pack. That guy is shredded. Um, now, you did take the time to go through that. So we're talking an eight week mentorship. How did that help your trading? Uh, it helped a lot. Again, just being surrounded by and um, the hearing the terms, hearing an expert take us through it and also, I'm going to say the accountability to show up um, because, you know, we have so many things like that want our attention every single day. We get pulled in a lot of different directions. And so having that appointment every Monday night to showing up with the group, the accountability was awesome. And then again, being surrounded by more people with the common goal of being successful at trading, because I don't really have, you know, anybody else in my life that cares about trading. So just being surrounded by those types of people and the accountability to show up, it was every, everything helps. Yeah, totally. That's killer. That's beautiful. So what's your goal? Too. I just started doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with nice. Matt. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh yeah. Matt's along. And by the way, shout outs to both you and him, where you're going to create a really, really cool product. That's going to be hitting the interwebs in the near future called noob versus ninja where you guys go back and forth um in short to give you guys a little bit of a preview so matt DeLong, chief technology officer of rlt one of my best friends my business partner and one of my mentors he sat down with whitney and whitney again to not underscore what she is is a consulate professional right highest level that you can possibly obtain in her industry okay and in her field is a absolute beast at health, wealth, and fitness, like with this, with this whole piece of it, right? So he's asking her all these questions, like, how do I get ripped? Or whatever questions he's asking her, right? As like a mid forties male with, with, with a wife and kids. And then she's asking him questions of stocks because he's been in stocks forever. So it's a really, really cool um, video yeah. series. And I'm excited for everyone to get some of that action. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, that'd be really cool. What are some of your goals from here winning with trading? Um, just to continue making enough money to pay my bills um, and also start introducing the, the whole concept of trading in some of my uh, competitor workshops that I'm hosting. Um, I don't know what that looks like yet, but uh, the Noob versus Ninja um, <laughs> whole series is going to really help me with that um, because, it, well, in the first episode, we go over, so I'm not going to give it away, but we go over a lot of the common myths, why people don't get involved in trading. And so just going through those things, talking about that um, is going to help me start introducing it um, on my retreats that I host, the competitor workshops that I host and things like that. Um, but as mm -hmm. far as my personal goal is to continue being more consistent um, <laughs> with my trading and um, at least make enough money to pay my bills every month. Love it. Yeah. Love yeah. it. That's huge. Type of yeah. one into the chat pane. If you want to make some, all of your bills every month from trading, how cool would that be? <laughs> That's so, it's amazing. It, it is. It can absolutely happen, but also, you know, it, it takes time. Like Whitney said, to build it up over time, right? You might have bills that are, let's say $2,000 a month that you can cover with trading. But in five years from now, those bills might be $4,000 a month, but you can build up to that. And even if you can't cover all of your bills, maybe you just want to cover some of the ones that you hate the most or you dislike the most um, as well. Because as you're, as you're hearing, Whitney has multiple streams of income, multiple. So she's not going to go, hey, I only want to trade full time and that's it. Don't get me wrong. She loves the stock market. And that's another reason I'm having you on this interview because it was amazing how quick you took to this stuff. Like you love doing it. And yeah. I want people to know that even though she loves it, 
she realizes that she's a business woman. She has the ability of creating other streams of income. Why not go pour into other human beings and add value to their life? Cause there's people out there that want to do and achieve what Whitney has done and they're going to want some of her advice and experience. And so she can provide that. Why not? I do love it. I can uh, definitely sit all day and do it. Um, but my passion still lies for creating events and impact for women. So, yeah. yep. I so, love yeah. that. One other piece and then I'll let you go. Um, when you do pull out money, because we know that some months are gonna be better than others. And I'm sure you've experienced that. How do you, how do you do it? Like, let's say for example, this month, pretty poo poo. I think most people can agree, at least for trading, it's been a little bit more of a challenge. Some months, like two months ago, were the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. How do you pull it out? Is it daily? Is it monthly? Is it weekly? Is it months in advance? You stack some cash to pay off future bills? Fill us in. So I was doing it weekly. So it was like, it would be like my paycheck at the end of the week. Um, so I would just pull it out. However, over the past month or so, I haven't pulled any out, which is probably wrong. But uh, the market's been so down. Um, but I had already pulled out so much, like since I was consistent on pulling it out every week, it's not like I'm gonna, you know, not be able to pay my bills now. So I haven't pulled it out in about a month. But um, hopefully I can get back to that soon. And I just pull it out every week. End of the week, Got Friday it. paycheck. <laughs> that's cool that's cool and you just, tra just transfer it to your bank account and you're like cool i just paid myself this is awesome yeah yep. yeah well my big takeaway from what you just said there was pay yourself when you're up whitney i've said this and i know this is why you've done it and i've it's actually quite hilarious how many times i've said this and i speak to other another trader and they're like no i didn't do that when you're up and when it's working when you're doing well pull out some gains and do something with that money, right? Buy an asset. That asset can be whatever you want it to be. There's a million assets in the world. Buy an asset with the money while you have it. And once you have that asset, then there's going to be a time where you won't be able to pull out money. I promise it will happen. Ladies and gentlemen, for you listening to me, it doesn't matter if you're me or my mentor, there will be weeks and or days and or months where you just do not pull out money from trading. I promise you. So when that comes, when that season of your life comes, what else can you do with your time, your knowledge, your resources, your assets, your skill sets, all the things to continue to create income for yourself? Because like Whitney said, she was pulling out cash weekly. And right now for the last month or so, hasn't been. I haven't either, by the way. And so that's why I haven't really done much traveling this month. Most of you guys are like, yeah, I'm, I've just been sitting here at my house, you know? Uh, trying to figure out some other things to do and some other ways I can improve people's lives and help enrich and help impact. So I love that. I think that's a really, really good example. Okay, good. I thought you were going to tell me, oh, you have to still pay yourself. <laughs> so I'm glad that. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the, w the way the math works is, let's say someone's trading a uh, $50,000 account and Every month or so, or sorry, every week with that $50,000 account, they have a bunch of different things invested there. So they're, they're swing trading with that account, right? And they're also day trading with that account. So they're like in and out, in and out, doing their thing. And that, let's say that $50,000 um, at the end of a month is 53,000, which by the way, for those listening is insane. Like that's an astronomical return, 50 to 53 in a month. So you pull out $3,000 and then you do that three or four different months in a row. Well, let's say month five account balance is still at 50 and through all of your trading and assets and whatever the market's just down a little bit and so it's at 45. well if it's at 45 or let's say 40 even and you're down ten thousand dollars paper okay well if you pull out money even if it is just let's say it's just day trading gains and small amounts of money right and you're still down you can do that but what i normally say is at that point in time just like wait just balance it out let things come back. Let things recycle back. Don't over leverage yourself. Don't lose more than you're up. Um, take a position where you know how much you're profitable. You know how much you've put into the bank. You have an, a running total and you don't give back whatever you've made over time. So, yeah, obviously, you know, I haven't even had money to get a haircut. You know, so just waiting. Uh, <laughs> but today, I'll get a haircut. I promise. Today, I'm getting a haircut. 
<laughs> but yeah, I love that. Well, yeah, that's, some, that's some amazing advice. If anyone has any questions for Whitney, feel free to throw them into the chat pane. And yes, if you guys are wondering how come I didn't ask her a bunch of workout questions, because obviously I should. That's because <laughs> New versus Ninja is coming out in the not too distant future, and you're going to get all of her advice. And you can also um, hop all over Instagram. Um, Whitney is extremely prevalent on all social medias. Where would you like people to reach out and contact you, Whitney, to get more info? On Instagram at Whitney Weiser Fit. Bam. So if you are a man or lady or whatever you prefer, go out, connect with Whitney, get her information because she has all kinds of things relevant to fitness as far as helping your body get in shape. And if you are a trader and you want to connect with another trader out there, Whitney, thank you so much yeah. for being here. Thank you for being a part of the show. And I appreciate your time and your honesty and your transparency. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. This is fun. Yep. My pleasure. Have a great day. All right, bye.